Alright, the holiday's over. Let's get back to it. G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Rise of Flight with Mags. It has been some time since I've done a little bit of Rise of Flight on the channel and honestly I shouldn't. This is still, to this day, a fantastic game. Although, having said that, I am really looking forward to seeing what 777 does transferring all of their Rise of Flight assets over to the much newer and much improved IL-2 Battle of X engine. Having said that, it is exactly the same engine. Just the Battle of Stalingrad Moscow Caban engine has received a lot of heavy updates, including VR support, which would be fantastic in Rise of Flight. Anyways, today we are flying out the Fokker D7, and this is in multiplayer. This is on the New Wings Battleground server, and this is actually one of the flights that took place during the live stream at Dead Meat's place over the weekend. Now, the live stream was done on Dead Meat's Twitch channel, and so anybody who was watching would have seen this engagement from his perspective, but this time you're going to be seeing it from mine. Now the aircraft in front of us is another Fokker D7 and it's being flown by Grievous. We are flying in a wing and Grievous and I are currently returning from a patrol over no man's land. Now we didn't find any contacts out there, however Grievous has spotted a very thin smoke trail running at medium to low altitude on the German side of no man's land, heading towards a German factory. Now as you can see I've made some modifications to my D7, I fit it with a reflector sight with a sun shield. The coloured tint area is designed so that if you get sunlight crossing the glass on the reflector site, this can cause the reflector site to flash white. The tint should keep it clear so you don't lose sight of the target, at least in that thin area. These were fit to some aircraft in World War I. They were relatively rare, but they still were used. So, the Fokker D7, the pride of the German Air Force in 1918, there was around 3,300 of this aircraft built and it had a whopping 160 horsepower coming from its six-cylinder inline engine. Its design was also very focused. It was primarily built to take on the French SPAD and the British SE5 series of fighters and to be able to reliably beat them in combat. Now the standard armament of the aircraft was two 7.92mm machine guns with 500 rounds of ammunition each mounted on top of the engine cowling as you can see. Now I say standard because as with most World War I machines, pilots got very creative when it came to the armaments of the aircraft with customizations including having two additional 7.92s mounted to the top of the wing, firing just over the top of the prop arc as so to avoid the need of a synchronization gear. And so we have located our target, and it is of course dead meat. He was flying out one of the British bombers, making a move on the German factories across the line, hoping to sneak through without being noticed. Luck was not with him today. So we're going to try and shoot him down. Now, engaging a bomber in a World War I aircraft was actually quite difficult. In the end, you only have two rifle caliber machine guns, and that is a hell of a lot of aeroplane that is flying. It has a lot of lift and there's not a lot of mass in the airframe itself. You could shoot the fuselage full of holes and outside of actually taking out the crew members, which is risky because, you know, they're armed as well and shooting back at you. You could potentially put hundreds if not thousands of holes in one of these aircraft and they would continue to fly. However, they do have one major weak point. The engines themselves. They're large, they're completely unarmored, and all of their internals are completely exposed, so rifle caliber machine gun fire is more than sufficient to break these engines. Now I pulled a little bit of a stall maneuver there to break distance so that Dead Meat's gunners couldn't tear me up. He's actually got a player man gun at the moment. And he's making his pass on the factory to drop the bomb. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to stop him from making that pass at the factory. But we can most certainly stop him from making his way home. Now, Grievous has approached in. Unfortunately, he's taken a big hit from the defensive gunners. You can see him trailing white smoke there. And his engine is about to pack it in. So once again, I'm making a work at the left-hand side engine and the wings. The wings are also a good point to go for. They're hard to hit. Most of the wing's mass is simply canvas, and again, bullets will pass through without doing too much in the way of damage. But if you manage to hit one of the wing spars, they are only wood. Shattering the wing spars will cause the wings to collapse as well. So 
once again, bringing it back around for another pass. I like to put a bit of separation between myself and the defensive gunners before making a move each time. And if we look closely, you can see that Grievous, well, his engine has given it up. So he's putting it down for a landing next to the factory. Thankfully, he should have a bit of support there and he will be under the defensive fire of the anti-aircraft guns defending the factory. But now it's time to finish off dead meat. He's smoking heavily out of both engines, so shots into the right engine, spray into the left engine and pull up over the top. And that should have been the hit that finished it off. And dead meat, along with the giant kite that is the Handley Page 0400, is finally down. However, this fight's not quite over yet. Deadmeat managed to get a bit of a call out, looking for a bit of assistance, just before we managed to take him down, and we've just been engaged. Our newest opponent is slightly to the more manoeuvrable side. That is a French Spad 13 C1, and it's dropped in on me blind, it missed its first pass, and now it's banking in to try and take a second swing. However, we do have a little backup in the area as well. A second German fighter has joined the fray. Now the Spad does have the jump on me here, however the D7 is capable of turning with and even out turning the Spad if you get a little creative with the controls. However, that's not what I'm trying to do. The Spad's being engaged from behind by the second aircraft, so I'm just going to try and maintain the turn until he either breaks off or gets shot down himself. And he takes the break which gives me the opportunity to pull in on his tail. I'm now flying Wingman to the second fighter. Spad goes vertical. And as he begins his rollover, I shoot a little from the hip here. It wasn't particularly well aimed, but I do manage to score some hits on the Spad as it goes past. Right hand bank into a scissor, and I actually lose sight of the Spad here as it ducks down below my nose to strafe Grievous on the ground. But I just managed to acquire him in just enough time to see him decide to go kamikaze. Poor Grievous, all he was doing is enjoying the show. And for some reason, well not for any some reason, it was because I managed to get those couple of hits during the spad stall, I was actually awarded the kill. In all honesty, I think that kill probably should have gone to Grievous. Anyway, at this point we are just banking around, I was forming up with the D5 to have a little bit of a look around and see exactly whether or not there are any more fighters coming in. The skies look pretty clear at this point, however, I was a little concerned with my ammunition. I haven't been keeping count of exactly how much I fired, I have only got 500 rounds per gun. And at this point I had been in the air for about 20 to 25 minutes, flying a patrol down the trenches and across no man's land, seeing whether or not we could find anyone or anything to blow up there. That long in the air, unsure about my ammunition counter, and we have just been joined by another D5, so there's now three German aircraft here. I decided it was time for me to bow out and head back to base. So the rest of the flight home was perfectly smooth, no problems whatsoever, although my landing here was a little to the rough side. but. It happens, this thing does have a tendency to twirl if you come in just a little bit too fast. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. It is good to be back. I really did enjoy my five days away on holidays and it's got the creative juices flowing. So I'll have a lot more good stuff coming to the channel for you guys very, very soon. And I hope you've liked the return to Rise of Flight. Anyways, guys, until next time, remember to click that like button, share and subscribe if you would like to see more. And as always, take care.